Okay, I just spent like the last hour setting up a camera because I can't work a tripod. All right, I'm gonna do this now. One take. Let's see if I can. Um, yes. First question from Anonymous who asked me, favorite song? I, I don't know. Uh... I've been listening to the Once More With Feeling soundtrack a lot, and I will go with that, yeah. I'm not gonna pick one song, because... No. How could it... Who would do that? Um... Question, why are you so cute? Well, that, that was, uh, that was Teresa. Question, why are you so cute? I'm not gonna answer that, Teresa, because I should ask you the same thing. Next question, also from a gray face, uh, Q and A. When did you join Tumblr, and what fandoms were you at first involved with? I joined Tumblr. I won't. I think it was around this time last year. Um. I. I know that I was more into supernatural, Doctor Who, that kind of thing. Uh, but Buffy was, Buffy and Firefly were like the two fandoms that were oldest and closest to my heart, so I guess I would, I would say those four. I didn't discover a lot of the things that I'm interested in now until later on in the year, so that was, that was nice. Mm. Alright, next question is, two of them are from Julie, who asked, if you could be any food item, what would you be? Um... I would be, I would be, um, I would, you know the, like, the stuff in the back of the fridge that no one ever touches, like, the leftovers that are really moldy and uneaten? I would be the thing behind that, because that means that I would never get eaten. I would just sort of develop into some, some, my own personal ecosystem, and that would be pretty cool. Just saying. Um... That was a weird answer, I'm sorry. Second question, uh, if you had the opportunity to use the communication stones to spend a day on Destiny, would you try to have a conversation with Rush, or just avoid him for fear of being mocked? Um, both? <laughs> I mean, smart people are just kind of intimidating. People in general are kind of intimidating. Um, I, I would probably spend the entire day mustering up the courage to talk to him and he'd probably just be like, well, if you're not going to help, then leave. And I would go, okay. It, it would be fascinating to have a conversation with him, but I don't know if he would tolerate me because I'm not a math person. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that, that's my answer. Um, Mandarini asked the next question, how did you discover the Slenderverse? Um, well, I heard about this wacky thing called the Slender Man, and I made the mistake of looking it up one night and not getting sleep, and then I discovered that, hey, there were video series about it, and if that's a good question. I don't know why I watched them. I mean, the thing kind of freaked me out, but it worked out, I guess. I mean, I always like to call the Slenderverse horror for people who don't like horror because it's different horror? Uh, I mean, okay, I guess, like, I like stories that aren't told in conventional ways, and Marble Hornets and those types of series, they take very unconventional formats, and I thought that was really cool and worth sticking with, and I guess, I guess that's how that happened. I don't... Someone probably told me about the Slender Man or something, I don't remember, but... There you have it. My thrilling tale. Next question is Anani again. Are you or ever have been a unicorn? Not to my knowledge. Um, but if there are any new developments, I will let you know. Next question is also an anonymous who asked me, what would you name your children? Or if you're not planning to have any, what would you name your pets? I don't, I don't plan on having any children. I do plan on having lots of pets because I don't plan on having any children, so, yeah, um, 
<laughs> Truth be told, I'm probably just gonna name them after fictional characters, all of them. Um, there would be a Giles, there would be probably a Jay. Um, oh, the other day I thought it would be really cool if I had a cat named Jabberwocky, because that just, that seems like a cool name for a cat, because cats are vicious creatures. I love them, but they're vicious. Um, mostly fictional characters that I adore. I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that that's, that's, that's what would happen, because I'm just very predictable. Teresa sent me two more questions. Uh, first question, what got you interested in Marble Hornets? Sort of answered that. Uh, well, I guess, okay, it needs a little more elaboration, because I discovered Marble Hornets is like the most well-known Slender Man web series. Um, I, well, okay, the second question she sent me was, which Slendy, creepy web series did you get into first? Um, and that needs some elaboration because I watched, when I first started watching Marble Hornets, I got it till entry five before the distortion noise freaked me out so much I closed Firefox and slammed my laptop shut and just went no, no, um, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have the guts to go back to it because it was just, I don't know, something about it just kind of terrified me a lot and I didn't like it at all. Um, but I still wanted to look into it because it seemed really intriguing to me, so I decided that first I would watch a less scary Slender series. Um, and I did a little bit of research and it said that Everyman Hybrid was a little bit less scary because there was a group of people instead of one guy with a camera. Um, so I decided to watch that instead because it said it was a little less scary. It was not less scary. It was more or less a different type of scary because Marble Hornets has the whole minimalism, loneliness, isolation feel, and Everyman Hybrid, there's a group of people, but there's like, a lot of really fucked up stuff happens. I mean, okay. Like, it was a different kind of fear. It was not as subtle. That's not necessarily bad. Um, it just, it wasn't the same style. Um, but I watched through the current entries of Everman Hybrid, and then I went back to Marble Hornets. Um, and for a while I flip-flopped between which I liked better, because they were both just so different. But I think right now Marble Hornets holds a very special place in my heart for many reasons that you guys have probably all heard before and don't want to hear me talking about again, so I'm just I'm gonna move on. Here's a question from Jay, um, who asks, What would you do if you found out I'm secretly Troy? <laughs> I I would scream and and cry probably. I don't know what I would do. <laughs> this is such a weird question. What the hell? Um I don't know what I would do. I bet there there's your answer. I'm sorry. Last one was from John. Uh wait, there were there were three. Three from John. Thank you, John. Uh Number one, pie or cake? Um, uh, I don't, mm, I don't know, uh, let's go with pie because that's what I ate last, um, I know, I don't, I, it's, yes, pie, uh, two, favorite movie of the year, why? Why? Um, like, do you mean movie that came out this year or movie that I watched this year? Uh, to be safe, I'll go with what came out this year because I watched a lot of movies this year. <laughs> um, I'll go with Much Ado About Nothing, uh, the black and white Whedon version, of course, because because I saw it in theater three times and it was really good and I liked the direction and the actors were like a big old family and you could tell that they were having fun making it. And, it was just great. I liked it. It was good. Oh, unless you mean favorite movie of this year, in which case I don't have one yet because it's 2014 now. That was... I'm, I'm going to delete that. Last question, also from John. Uh, what made you fall in love with Buffy? Well, um... 
I don't know if it was any one thing. I I mean, okay, I, I watched Firefly first. That was like my gateway drug into fan things. Um, watched Firefly. I liked it. I really liked it. And then I realized that the guy who did it also did Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog, which I'd seen, and I really also enjoyed that. So I decided to look up all the other stuff he'd done, and I discovered Buffy, Angel, and Dollhouse. And I watched Dollhouse first because it was shorter and therefore less of a commitment. Um, because there was like 12 seasons of Buffy and Angel combined, and I was like, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Uh, but then I just did it one day, and uh, that was that was a good decision. I mean, I don't know. I, it was It's just such a good show. I don't... I never get tired of talking about how much I love that show and how much it changed me and helped me through bad times. But it did. And that was that was good. I don't know what made me fall in love with it. I mean, well, first of all, the dialogue. That was like the first thing I noticed. Um, the dialogue and like how it would it would subvert your expectations. Like, I didn't really know what I was expecting when I clicked the first episode, because I'd seen, I'd seen my brother watching bits and pieces of the show, like, but I'd never seen a full, well, I, I think I did see a full episode, but I had no idea what was going on. Um, so I didn't know what to expect when I watched the first episode, and then I, like, the first scene is just the, classical horror guy and girl sneaking to an abandoned school and then it just changes on you and um that's when it cost my, caught my interest and that's when I stopped trusting Joss Whedon actually no I stopped trusting him back when I watched Firefly and Dr. Horrible but um and the dialogue was just snappy and the characters like I felt like I knew him after the first episode and if you know me then you'll know that I don't give a damn about plot if there are strong characters to hold it up. And that's what Buffy had. Is it had great metaphors and great plot and great stories and stories about people that I cared about. I loved these characters. I wanted to watch them grow and change and I wanted to stay with them. And I think I watched like the whole series in like two months <laughs> over a summer. Because I loved it so much. I didn't do anything else because I, it was... It was just so great. Okay, I've rambled about this, but I love it, and it was great, and it was fun, and I just, I really, it was a good, it was a good show. It was a great show. And it will always be a part of me. Alright. Okay, that was, that was the last, last question, so. Skype, don't do that. That's very rude. Um... Thank you for sending questions. I hope I wasn't too terribly awkward on camera. I'm going to edit this now and hope that there aren't too many terrible things that happen. I am not good on camera yet.